What would happen if someone deliberately tried to blow up a nuclear power station? How bad would this be in a modern power plant? Would we see the nuclear fallout similar to Chernobyl? Or would it be a lot worse? Some reports are saying that it could be 10 times worse than Chernobyl, while others disagree and state the opposite. So, let's discuss it. The threat of bad actors trying to blow up a nuclear power station has been thought about in the design of the power plants. But with a full war raging across Europe, there is a real threat that either deliberately or by accident that a nuclear power plant will be hit and go into a critical meltdown. At the time of recording, the Russian forces occupy Europe's biggest nuclear power plant and have engaged in warfare both at this plant as well as in Chernobyl. This gives two different threats, attacking a live power plant and attacking a previous radiation source or storage. Before we talk about what might happen if these places were attacked, let's discuss the two major nuclear power disasters in the past, Chernobyl and Fukushima, and how and why they exploded. On the 26th of April 1986, a safety stress test on the fourth reactor of the Chernobyl power plant went horribly wrong. The operation of a nuclear reactor is all about controlling the cascade of neutrons that is being emitted and absorbed. In nuclear fission, the energy is generated by having atoms decay from one nuclear species to another with a lower atomic number. In this process, the binding energy of the atoms is released, which can generate a massive amount of energy. Also in this process, neutrons are often emitted, which is a key for sustaining a nuclear reaction. Basically, we add an isotope of a radioactive atom, say uranium, that has a relatively long lifetime. But if that isotope was to absorb an additional neutron, then its lifetime would become extremely short, forcing the atom to decay. If all of the neutrons that are emitted from one decaying atom are absorbed by other atoms, which then decay and emit more neutrons, there would be a critical reaction, where very quickly, all of the atoms that decay release enough energy to form a massive explosion. This is the exact principle behind nuclear weapons, although they use atoms that are more prone to an out of control reaction. So to control the reaction in a nuclear power plant, there needs to be material added to help to absorb the neutrons, which can slow down and even stop the nuclear reactions. But at the same time, there needs to be a material that does the opposite, that can be interchanged so that the reaction can be controlled, and thus the amount of energy generated is controlled. In many reactors, water is used to absorb neutrons and carry the heat away from the reactor, which eventually turns turbines and generates electricity. But this is not enough, so reactors use additional control rods to control the reaction. Chernobyl had control rods that had a section of graphite at the bottom, which enhanced the reaction, and a section of boron carbide at the top, which absorbs almost all of the neutrons, stopping the reaction. But due to a design flaw, this ended up causing a catastrophic failure. Now, there are a few reasons why Chernobyl exploded, but I will briefly explain. During a safety test, they had most of the rods that allowed them to control the reactor removed, placing the reactor in a slower reaction, but not completely shut off. That is, there was no graphite in between to enhance the reactions, but nor was there boron carbide to stop it. Instead, water was in the void. Water is a good neutron absorber, so it does slow down the reaction, but this made the reactor very sensitive to the conditions of the water. The water began to boil, creating voids where there was no water to absorb neutrons anymore. And this accelerated the nuclear reaction and was the beginning of the end. As this started to get out of hand, the engineers decided to insert the control rods again to stop the reaction. And this is where the design flaw comes into play. Because the graphite was at the bottom, as they inserted the control rod, the graphite is placed next to the reactor first. And this caused an already beginning to run away a nuclear reaction to go completely critical. Vaporizing the cooling water, 
and ultimately resulting in multiple explosions. In the end, the question of what the explosions were is still up for debate. The first explosion is assumed to be water pipes exploding from the pressure. But the second has been theorized that it could have been the separation of water into hydrogen and oxygen, which when it recombined, exploded. Or it could have been a full-blown nuclear explosion. Either way, the aftermath of this incident was terrible. While the explosions themselves were bad, the real damage to the surrounding area was from the fire that ensued. The graphite from the reactor burnt, taking with it a lot of radioactive material, spreading it across Europe in the winds. Approximately 30 people died from the immediate blast trauma or the radiation poisoning in the seconds to months after the disaster, with 60 people in total in the decades since. In total, the number of deaths related to the event in Europe has various estimates, ranging from 4,000 to 16,000. In Belarus, the closest country to Chernobyl, which is inside the Ukraine, one third of the milk and one fifth of the meat was too contaminated to use in 1987. At the same time in Ukraine, between 30 to 90% of milk in the clean areas was judged too contaminated to drink. So could this happen in a modern nuclear reactor? Not really. <laughs> Newer reactors have fixed this design flaw and even built significantly better safety procedures. Even if a missile was to hit one of these reactors, this would not likely occur and is not the greatest concern. There is something that is much more dangerous and this is where we need to talk about the Fukushima nuclear disaster. This is a story of how a series of unfortunate events led to the second worst nuclear power plant failure of all time. On the 11th of May, 2011, one of the worst earthquakes to ever hit Japan with a magnitude of 7.4 resulted in the nuclear power station of Fukushima losing power. In this event, the nuclear reactor cores shut down and diesel generators start to continue to flow water through the reactor to keep it cold. Unfortunately, the biggest tsunami to hit Japan in hundreds of years struck the plant shortly after. The wave had a height of around 14 meters and was moving at more than 150 kilometers per hour. This overcame the tsunami protection of the plant, destroying most of the diesel generators and massively damaging the facility. This resulted in the cores getting hotter and hotter, building up so much pressure that even if they had the power to do so, they could no longer push water into the cores to cool them down. As a result, they had to send a group of people on what was potentially a suicide mission into the reactors to manually vent the pressure into the atmosphere. While this did release radiation, it was better than allowing the reactors to explode. This gave the workers enough time to work on cooling down the reactors. They were able to do this with a combination of helicopters and firefighters to get enough water into the reactors and cool them down and stop a more serious event. But it was almost catastrophic. At one point, the pools where the spent fuel rods were being stored began to empty. If these pools were emptied, a fire would start that would spread radioactive material everywhere with the potential of it being 10 times worse than Chernobyl. Luckily, there have been no recorded deaths from this incident, but there are likely to be some in the future from the cancer that some of the first responders form. Now let's discuss what would happen if military action destroyed one of these power plants. Let's start with what might happen if Chernobyl took more critical damage. Chernobyl no longer contains any active power plants, with the last being shut down in December 2000. But there is still the contaminated remains of the disaster. The real risk here is that a targeted attack on the remains would destroy the capping layer and start a new fire. This would not be as bad as the original disaster. The radioactive materials had decades of time to decay, but it would still spew radioactive clouds into the air potentially contaminating vast regions of Europe with radioactivity. A far more pressing concern is what is happening in a live nuclear power station in the south of the country. The Zaporizhia power plant has six active reactors and is currently under Russian control, although this might change at any time. 
The problem is that there has been fighting in the facility itself, and the chances of something happening, like a rogue missile hitting something, is a real threat. Now, if a missile did hit one of these reactors, then it is possible that we could see a similar situation to Fukushima. Except we would be working against the clock to cool down and stabilize a facility in an active war zone. This being said, the facility is far better constructed than the Fukushima plant, and it has been tested for the possibility of missile strikes, and after 9-11 it has been tested for the scenario of planes crashing into it, and the facility has been built to withstand these events. While a direct strike is a concerning situation, there is something that is far more concerning. A potentially more serious hazard could come if the power supply to the nuclear reactors and the backup generators was lost and led to a loss of coolant. With no electricity to power the pumps around a hot reactor, the fuel would start to melt down. You can think of this as the same issue as Fukushima, but all that needs to happen is a loss of power. Ukraine's nuclear agency says three out of the four transmission lines linking the plant to Ukraine have already been damaged by rocket fire. If this last source of power was also broken, the agency believes that the nuclear fuel would begin melting down, resulting in a release of radioactive substances into the environment, and the diesel generators would not provide a long-term solution. Additionally, there is the issue of the spent fuel pools, which in theory should be safe, but if the pools were to drain, this would present a significant issue. And again, this is what people refer to when they say things could be 10 times worse than Chernobyl. One expert had this to say, the weapons being used to fight around the Zaporizhia facility didn't appear to be sufficient to harm the spent fuel pools. If they were to drain though, this would result in a meltdown of the radioactive material containing them, causing an expulsion of large amounts of radioactive isotopes into the atmosphere. This is such a delicate situation. This is the first time in history that we've had a nuclear power station that has been in this situation. One bad decision, one rogue missile, one bad person. That is all it could take to start the worst nuclear power disaster ever. This isn't just a Russia or Ukraine issue. If the spent fuel rods burn, with the right winds, most of Europe would be affected. The repercussions on the global economy, the food chains, international travel, and the fuel prices would be massive. If you think living costs are bad now, wait until Europe can't eat or sell any of the food that it grows. This is an extremely delicate situation. One that we all hope will be resolved sooner rather than later. If you want to donate to help those displaced by this war, I have a link down in the description. Thanks for watching. Have fun and see you next time.